What's going on guys? This is a video about whether or not we should bail out the hotel industry. So don't dislike the video for the message, like the video for the content and then talk about the message. But I just wanted to let you know, I'll be back out on the strip tonight. It's Friday and uh, I don't even know, is it the 25th of September? We'll be back out on the strip. So come check us out on our live stream tonight. Hit the bell for the notifications and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you around tonight. So right now we start the video and we say action. The American Hotel and Lodging Association says that if we don't have a government bailout for hotels, two-thirds of all the hotels in the entire United States of America are likely to close within the next six months. They are not just sounding the alarm. They're not just ringing it. They are pounding it with a sledgehammer and trying to push for legislation that sees their industry get a bailout, similar to how we had other industries in the past get a bailout. We've had these bailouts before. Sometimes they work okay. Sometimes they don't work as well. We're going to talk about why they're looking for a bailout, what it means to you, the end user of these hotels and properties. And we're going to also discuss whether or not this is something that is completely necessary because I don't really know. I just had these thoughts and I thought I would share them with you. So you can tell me in the comments below whether or not you think that a big federal bailout for the hotel industry is really somewhere we need to be. Now, I read this on casinonews.org or casino.org slash news is what it is. And uh, they then interjected a bunch of politics. I'm not going to go political in this video. Uh, they actually then basically endorsed a candidate towards the end, and I think that's terrible. Hey, guys and gals in the news world, if you're going to try to be a legitimate news source, don't throw in a bunch of politics and pro rah rahs for one side or the other because it delegitimizes what you're talking about. But uh, that's the topic for today's video. I am Steve, and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. I hope you guys would like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications, and leave us a comment below if you guys think that this is something that that's appropriate. Are you pro or con government bailout? Pro or con government bailout? Just say pro, just say con, or leave a little background as to why and play nice in the comments as always, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys want to reach out and support the channel, we have Not Leaving Las Vegas, the Facebook group. It's free to do, no politics there, no advertising all over. We're not a big platform for billboards. If you guys want to go even further because you really love the channel, you have YouTube channel memberships as well as Patreon. You guys get early access to videos as I do them. You guys will also have access to photos that I post up. You'll also have access to things like blog posts. And the most important thing to me right now, VegasFaceMask.com. My wife makes them. They are fantastic. Look at that. 60 different designs. I got to wear my Pro America stuff because there's a lot of people right now that have no faith in what's going on. But hey, look, we're bigger than the politics of the world, aren't we? Yes, we are. That is true. Two for $25. Can't go wrong. Made right here at this house by my wife. And you never lose them because they have straps on the back. And there you go. All right, so commercials aside, haters are done hating. Okay, all the dislikes are registered. The American Hotel and Lodging Association says that 67% of all hotels across the United States are going to close in the next six months. I know, crazy, right? Oh my God, half the strip's going to close. Two-thirds of the strip's going to close. No, two-thirds of the strip's probably not going to close. Uh, but they are talking about the general overall health of the hotel business. And they're saying it's bad. They say that the industry cannot survive another six months like this. And if it does, then everybody's going to be closed. There's going to be no more hotels. But for the most part, a 7 out of 10 of every hotel you've ever been to is going to be shuttered. It's all going to be turned into, I don't know, what do they put in those places? A Goodwill store. In Vegas, they put Goodwills and Savers stores everywhere after the recession. It was just, it was wild. That was the only thing people could afford to shop at. So uh, let's examine the numbers and talk about the stats and why they need a government bailout according to them. So in Nevada, I'm going to focus on Nevada. I'm not going to focus on nationwide stats. And when we focus on Nevada, we basically just focus on Las Vegas. And then we're going to get back in the next few minutes, whether or not a government bailout should be appropriate or whether it should not be appropriate and why they bail out certain industries and not others as well. But in terms of stats in Las Vegas, you know, in Nevada, and so we're going to talk about Las Vegas as a whole, because in Nevada, there's 194,400 hotel rooms, according to the statistics. Out of 194,400, according to LVCVA, Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, 145,000 of those hotel rooms are located in Las Vegas and the Las Vegas surrounding area. So that means that basically we have close to all of the hotels in Nevada in Las Vegas. Yeah, you have Tahoe, it's a beautiful place. South Lake Tahoe, 
part of that state line on the other side. We have Reno, small little hotels in the middle of rural Nevada. You should definitely explore those places. It's, you know, Nevada is a very cool place to go to, but no, we're talking about Vegas when we talk about these numbers. So how many people work in this industry in Nevada? Well, 370,741 people are directly connected to the hotel business. So if those hotels close, it's gonna impact 370,741 people. Now, the hotel industry here in Nevada earns $27 billion a year, $27 billion with a B. And of that, $4 billion go to the state uh, treasury and $5 billion get put into the uh, federal government's hands. And so there you go. Now, how is that for balance, by the way? <laughs> People of Nevada don't even benefit as much as the federal government does. But hey... The system is the system. What you gonna do? Fight the powers that be? I don't know. Anyways, that's the stats. Now, when it comes to those statistics, is it gonna affect Nevada so super negatively if in hypothesis is correct, 67% of those hotels across the country closed? Well, no, that's the thing. Here's the deal. When you look at the strip right now and you name all the properties you can from start to finish, you have Penn National Gaming, the Wynn Resorts International or whatever it's called, Wynn Resorts, and you have Adelson's Place with the Sands, and you have MGM Resorts, and you have Caesars Entertainment, and you have some small independents out there, but most of the hotels right out here, not small independent hotels. They're all basically lopped into corporate ownership. Now, I'm not saying corporate ownership isn't hurting right now. Obviously, the MGM Resorts International Group laid off 18,000 people across the country. Those are not furloughs. Those are permanent job losses. <clears throat> we talked about that on the channel and that sucks a whole lot. At the same time, these are not the kinds of hotels that are going to be closed permanently. These are the ones that have government money coming, not government money, sorry, Wall Street money coming in. Ooh, not government money. Wall Street money is coming into their coffers. <clears throat> They're not so worried about it. At the end of the day, they know they can get through this. They know they have the real estate. The real estate is worth something. They're always going to be worth money to somebody. No, it's the smaller business owners that we're really worried about that are going to be affected across the country, small business owners. So I worked at a Howard Johnson Express Inn on McLeod Trail South in Calgary before I left for the United States way back in like 2003, 2004. That was actually a business that was a mom and pop owned hotel. They got a franchise opportunity to put a Howard Johnson logo on their place, keep the standards of the Ho Hojo group, as they called them back in the day. And then that was it. So it's a small mom and pop. Most of these hotels that you see on the roadside, small little motor inns, motor hotels, motels, as they call them, those are not corporate owned entities. So that's a problem for those operators. They have to make sure that they can pay their bills and they are still you know, basically by the skin of their teeth most nights, whether or not they're gonna make a profit in a lot of cases. So that's the ones that are gonna be negatively impacted. But why do these bailouts even happen? See, we bail out Boeing and we bail out the automobile industry years ago. The automobile industry obviously might not have even been as large as the hotel industry. I'm not gonna talk about the automobile industry because I don't know enough about that business. But I will mention this. When we bail out something like Boeing, we have to take a look at what Boeing does for the country as a general whole. We have to take a look at the fact that yes, they fly commercial airliners, and yes, they sell those commercial airliners to the airline industry, but Boeing also makes defense uh, contracts happen for the government. So if Boeing is making airliners that you and I fly on, at the same time, they're also making missiles that can protect this country. And uh, I'm not gonna get into the politics of if we should even have those missiles, but the truth of the matter is, no matter where you're coming from, if we didn't have that person to make those things for us, our, our enemies would look at us and say, oh, you don't got anybody to make any armaments for you, huh? And we might have a bigger uh, problem on our hands. That's the only logical reason I could see for it bailing out an industry like the airline industry. It's not the industry that they're bailing out. It's the actual company that's behind it that has a lot more to do behind the scenes than we will ever know. But should we bail out the hotels? That's the main question, right? Well, I mean, there's two schools of thought on this. You have the uh, one school of thought that's very, you know, much like, well, sink or swim mentality. We usually sink or swim. If you can't make it, you can't make it. And I know for a fact, if you talk to some of these hotel operators, they've been having a tough time for the past few years. The economy's getting great, but they're still not able to really expand and explode. And some of them have been running a loss for a long time. If those people close over this pandemic, then maybe it was something that was going to happen. But at the same time, you think I like the idea that people are going to be having a problem feeding their kids, putting their kids through school. And I'm not talking about college. I'm talking about putting their kids through elementary school and buying them the supplies that they need for that education that they want their kids to get. No, not a good feeling at all to know that that happens. Everybody has a story and it's a sad story when you have to tell it like that. So if we don't bail out the companies, then we have these problems where MGM does furlough more people, Marriott's furloughing people, everybody's letting somebody go, letting them off, getting, 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 them, the, getting them the pink slip. 
Pink slips were things they used to put in paychecks. If you got one, you knew that you were let go. So if we keep having that happen, it's going to just send ripples out through everywhere. I don't know what to do. You guys need to tell me in the comments below because I can't say definitively if it's a good or a bad idea to do this. Maybe we have to do the thing where we don't rig it so, so the big guys get their money. Remember when the Lakers got some PPP money? So to Ruth Creek Steakhouse, just naming two that I know, they gave their money back because they were threatened with jail time for taking it. That was nice of them, right? But you know, what would happen if we did bail these companies out? It would just maybe lead to the big companies with the huge accounting firms that follow them and the big banking connections getting their money with the small guys still don't. So does that really help anything? I don't think so. So we have to take a look at this and we have to be very, very measured in every step we take because we already don't have money as a country. We're already giving a lot of money away. We're already doing a lot of bad, irresponsible things with what we have. We can't do more irresponsible things with what we have. We need fiscal responsibility. But those are the thoughts for today. I don't have a definitive answer for you. I usually have a pretty strong opinion on things, but I think of the human being story over here and I think of the big greedy corporate story over here and I think it's somewhere in the middle that we have to find some kind of a solution. But that's what it is. Guys, that's the video for today. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys liking, sharing, subscribing. Tell us in the comments below if you think that we need to have some kind of a bailout for these companies. I'm just curious to know your opinion. I thought I would bring this kind of rumor to you that this might be happening so you guys can know where, where things are standing as a business perspective. If you guys like the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications. Of course, you guys can always head over to vegasfacemask.com and you guys can always do that if you guys want to we got a smile under the masks you know you're smiling because you can see it in the eyes thanks for watching guys now it's the time of the video where i say three two one click so three two one and ready and click <laughs>